What's up, YouTube? This is Chris, a.k.a. Barnon 11970 and as always, I thank you guys for taking the time to watch my video. All right, let's get into it. I had an interesting scenario happen today at my massage office. Um, one of my um, clients is a retired college professor, gets headaches all the time, so I work a lot around his scalp and had to alleviate some of the pressure points and tension. We got into an interesting conversation because we talk a lot about the world events and he likes the fact that somebody that seems like a simpleton everyday person like myself with the amount of knowledge that I have. So we have some very good and deep conversations. And today we started talking about how uh, what was going on with Syria, um, what's going on with uh, um, the Ukraine, Russia what's events around the world. And I started talking about the fact of how the, um, the media manipulates our thought process through a form of propaganda where they gear you in a certain direction and that our government and plenty of other governments from World War II on have basically been hiring like hypnotists, uh, people who are into the occult, people are into mind control or people who are like, for example, um, counselors or people that are into counseling people, how to gear people into a certain direction by using emotion. So it's a form of programming and how you notice how the media throughout the world Instead of going from one channel to the other and getting different perspectives or point of views from an event, you see channel after channel after channel of pretty much them regurgitating the same thing. That is a form of control. It's a form of programming where you steer people in a certain direction by talking only in one point of view. And what happens is throughout our history and our lifetimes, we become programmed into a belief system. And if you think logically, belief is nothing more than your opinion that the information that you've been provided is accurate. And I was giving some um, examples and we talked, one of the things we talked about was the Kennedy assassination. Now, obviously, I wasn't there. Obviously, he wasn't there. So neither one of us saw the events as they were taking place. So the only way that myself, him, and numerous amounts of people can get what might have happened is through other people's interpretations of it. Now, they could be genuine. They could be mistaken. They could be flat out lying. They could have been bribed. We don't know. But we as a society base our information that we get in our particular place in the world and our particular time in the world and hope that that information is right. Now, because I'm the fact that I research alternative media, I research things that the average media does not talk about. I've learned to say to myself that belief is irrelevant. It's nothing more than an opinion. And I can take information. And if it can change my point of view on something, I'm all for it. And I'm a prime example of that because before I was quote unquote awoken back in around 2011, I was the typical person that believed in President Obama the democratic system, that our government was really trying for our best interests, that the banking system was flawed but could be fixable. I didn't know about the corruptions. And then I got information that allowed me to change my mind. The problem is, and you see this with the majority of people, and this even happened when I was talking to this gentleman. Now, meanwhile, this is he's probably in his early 60s, college professor. As his point of view was he believed the official story that John F. Kennedy was assassinated by the lone gunman theory. To the point where, when we discussed it, I was talking from my point of view in this tone. I was not emotionally attached. 
And this individual, just like the majority of people, they get defensive, they get angry, and they automatically almost get to the point, and he said this in the conversation at one point, I don't want to talk about this anymore. Until I used my logic and reason to calm him down and point to the fact that saying somebody's right or wrong is irrelevant because belief is nothing more than, like I said, the hope that you get something right. It doesn't mean you're right. So the problem that we most as majority of people don't understand is we've been led into a programmable way of pushing us into taking a belief in something, converting it into an attachment, which creates an emotion, which can create separation, anger, and even murder. And if you think that's crazy, look at majority of the wars throughout history. They've been based either on money, power, or religion. Now let's take religion, for example. I seriously doubt there are many people out there that can say that whatever god or gods they believe in, that those particular gods have visited them in a physical form, sat down next to them, stood next to them on a bus or whatever, had a conversation with them. So they say, hi, I'm Buddha. I just wanted to come down and let you know I'm alive. So now you have proof that you could believe in me. Or, hi, I'm Jesus. I just wanted to let you know that I sacrificed myself the way the story says, and I wanted to show you the proof of all this stuff. Now you can believe in me because here I am. The majority of people got their beliefs from whatever place in the world they were in. So location has something to do with that particular belief. The time in which they were born and the families they're associated with. So in other words, a person born this century, one was born in Asia, one was born in America, they're going to have most likely different religious beliefs. The problem is when we take a belief to the point where we attach it to us, where we are so strongly connected to that belief that we are willing to say to someone else, instead of saying, I don't agree with you, or I don't think your version of your story is as accurate, and leaving it alone with the person having the ability to have that choice, we've had people get to the point where we want to hurt each other. We want to kill each other because somebody else's belief varied from your own. And we see it all the time. The news, the politicians, all the people, the powers that be, utilize this and take advantage of the fact. It's the perfect divide and conquer. And that's why when you hear politicians throughout the world, they talk about things like gay marriage. They talk about things like abortions, women's rights. They talk about race because they want things that they know will separate the people. And they know that there are people that are so passionate about those particular subjects that they are willing to hurt or at least want to hurt somebody else that thinks differently. And you even notice that even on my channel, Barnon 11970, there are people that will purposely go to my channel and purposely try and hurt me with insults, name calling, and the ridiculous thumbs down technique because they don't agree with what I say. And instead of having rational conversations, or instead of just mentioning their points of views, their attitude is, well, you're wrong, you're crazy, you're a liar, you're this, you're that, I hate you. When they don't even know me, and they're not willing to communicate with me. And I've had people throughout the years, and that's one of the reasons why I deleted my old channel. Because I originally had a channel called Barnon 11967. And I deleted it because I got tired of some of the threats I was getting. Now, I had some problems with people like Corey C. Some of you know who he is. But we've talked about it. We're adults. We've gotten past it. So it wasn't anything major. But there were some people where I was getting people wanting to rape my wife. And they said this. And other people wanting to cause damage. And I got to the point, it's almost not worth it. Just because I was trying to speak what I believed was my version of the truth. And I can even say myself, everything that I believe in, a lot of it I cannot prove. 
And that's why things like sun gazing that I talk about, that's not a belief. That, for me, is a fact. Because I am out there doing it. I'm not just researching it and saying, well, that seems right or that feels right. I'm doing it so I know it's right. And that's why I'm not here to convince anybody else what to believe. If you want to think that what I'm doing is crazy or you don't want to believe in it because you've never heard of it before, that is your right. I will not threaten you or want to change your point of view to the point where it's not worth my energy to convince anyone to believe in it. Because for me, it doesn't matter either way. And until we learn as a society to get rid of that emotional attachment that has been bombarded on us, because just go to any event, any tragic event in the most recent years, in the past decade or two, when you turn on a channel on a radio, on a news station, or turn on the uh, radio and hear a radio station, you flip from station to station and there's a major event that happened. You will notice every single channel, no matter what point of view that they say that they have, they all talk like they're saying it from the same cue card. They're not questioning it. They're not debating it. So I'm not saying I have all the answers. And I'm not saying somebody else has all the answers. Because even things like evolution. Last time I checked... It's not a fact, it's a theory. What about the Big Bang Theory? There are people who argue that is truth, when it is nothing more than an educated guess. Because unless somebody has a time machine that I'm not aware of, and they went back to the creation of everything, then how do they know what has happened? And information can be bought can be changed, can be mistaken, can be inaccurate, and can flat out be straight lies. So when people say things, and this includes myself, I'm not saying I'm not prone to this, but just because we read something that somebody else wrote does not mean that they weren't lying, or it does not mean that they got the information wrong, or had a different point of view, or was bribed to talk a certain way. That doesn't guarantee that's going to happen, but unless you're in an event where you see what is happening, everything else, all the other information you get is hearsay. And I say, what is wrong with being able to question it without the emotion? Because like they say, if you don't repeat, if you don't research history, you're doomed to repeat it. And how many deaths, how much destruction how much bloodshed must happen before we realize that we're doing the same thing over and over and over and over and nothing changes for the better. Look at all the technology we have. Look at all the technology we could have had if we didn't silence people where a select few had enough financial resources to prevent world-changing situations from ever happening. Just look at people like Wilhelm Reich. Look at people like Nikolai Tesla. Where we would be at this point when in the 1800s, Nikolai Tesla was able to create machines that can extract the electricity from the atmosphere, unlimited free energy without wires. Just imagine where we would be at this point over 100 years later. People at the top know how to program the masses because like I was telling um, the, my, my client today, if you ever heard the original story of Chicken Little and you can look it up, even they had a Disney movie about this back in, I think in the forties or fifties, I don't know. It's irrelevant. The original story of Chicken, Chicken Little is this. There is a wolf and he wanted to get to a chicken coop where all the chickens were. And the fence was so well built that he could not get in there to get the chickens. So he devised a plan. He found the most manipulative, easily manipulated, manipulative person that he could find, well, chicken that he could find, who was not very bright. And he pretended to spread gossip in the chicken community and convinced Chicken Little that the sky was falling 
And that coop that they were well protected in was going to be a dangerous place to be if the sky completely fell. And because that little chicken, who was young, naive, gullible, in other words, you can't teach an old dog new tricks, but you can teach new ones. So it's it's showing that the wolf was getting a very young person who was impressionable and easily influenced to all of a sudden create a rumor that it was dangerous to be in that coop because the sky was falling and he convinced the masses into finally believing that was happening. And they left the protected area of that coop because the little chicken was told by the wolf that there is a cave outside of the pen that they can go to and be safe from the falling of the sky. So that little chicken, through this information that he was given, led him to convince the others to escape the protected area of the coop, leave it, and go into a cave where the wolf ultimately had them trapped and ate them. People have to stop being easily influenced. I'm not saying I have all the answers. And I don't think anybody out there totally has all the answers. We listen to people and we believe them because we trust them. And there are people that we don't trust, we end up not liking them. But that doesn't mean that that person can't be wrong or can't be lying or can't be bought. And we have to understand that until we can be able to let go of the emotional aspect of it, where we have this attachment, because not for nothing, whether Lee Harvey Oswald killed Kennedy by himself or there was a government conspiracy to have him eliminated doesn't affect me at this moment at all, either way. I'm sure there are consequences if it didn't happen or if it happened differently. But at this moment, either way, I'm not going to all of a sudden just drop dead. So I don't have the emotional attachment. And that's what I convinced to this gentleman, that we can agree to disagree and have different points of view, but I don't get the anger. I don't want to hurt somebody else because their belief is different than mine. And until we understand that there are people that profit off of our fear, off of our ignorance, off of our beliefs, that they just dangle little bits of information from people that have the suit and tie and a Harvard degree, and they're sitting there and telling you this is the way it is. And the majority of people say, oh, okay. And they don't question it. And they refuse to learn. We're not getting better as a society. We may be more technologically advanced, but how are we any different from any other civilization? We're about to go into a potential brink of war. I don't think it's going to happen, but there's a potential. And that's not good because the very people who profit from the war and start the wars are not the ones fighting the wars. So I hear all these people talking about, oh, we got to rally on the troops. Now, I'm not saying the soldiers are the problem. But they are following the orders of a corrupt government system who is sending them to potentially die or at the very least kill someone else. So they at the top can profit off of that. And that's why you see veterans after they've served their purpose and come back disabled or mentally scarred or physically scarred. They basically just cast aside. Well, you're no longer our problem. Look at all the firemen and policemen that were trying to rescue the people when 9-11 when the buildings, the Twin Towers came down. And they got all that asbestos-related problems. How many of their healthcare pro their healthcare services dropped them? Or how many of them died years later? And the government said, oh, well, that has nothing to do with what happened at 9-11. You're being used. And to say, I'm just doing my job, just so you can put food on a table, is, is, should not be justification for allowing evil to thrive. Because let me tell you something, Hitler's army was just doing their job. Yao Ming's army, who was getting people to assassinate millions of Chinese citizens, they were just doing their job. And until we can understand that we can control things and we don't have to stoop to that level, and believe that I may be one person and I may not be able to make a change, but many people can change the world and you don't even have to pull a trigger to do it. 
they use fear and emotion and things that will divide you and anger you to make you lose focus on the people at the top who are doing the problems and making you focus on some other little person or somebody at just one higher level than you. And you think you have that satisfaction of, oh, I killed that person or I hurt that person. Now I feel better. Well, is the world a better place because of that? And the ones at the top who send all their little minions to do all their work for them, they're sitting there laughing at us, counting our money that they've stolen from us, all of our wealth, all of our freedoms, and made us all believe that we have privileges, that we should be getting on our knees and thanking these people for saying, oh, we're allowing you the privilege to do something. Why are we accepting this? Why are we saying this is okay? And why are we still afraid? I've lost my fear. Because you know what? We all die. We don't end. We die, but we don't end. Because light beings never die. They just transform. So I'm not afraid of the fact that I came here for whatever purpose I came here for. And will go somewhere else when I'm done. I don't believe somebody else has the right to have to tell me what I can and cannot do as long as I'm not hurting someone else. I'm not out stealing from other people. I'm not out punching old ladies. I'm not out trying to hurt somebody. I'm not just to live my life. And if I want to decide to live a certain way or think a certain way, I should have that right just as well as you should have that right. And who is anybody to try and hurt somebody else because their point of view may be different? Because I'm not going to sit here and say, I know everything. And the same as the people who hate you for it, they have no way that they can base anything that they know on fact. I mean, look at religion. Well, my God, my belief in my God is different from the belief of your God. So I'm going to hurt you because my belief is stronger than yours? Look how many wars have started because of that. And how much division there is in the world. Are we tired of it yet? Is it just me? Am I the only one capable of the fact of letting go of the emotion? Because that's another reason why I took down my old channel. Because I was angry. I did let it affect me. I did have the emotion go into it. I was no saint. I, I take full responsibility for the things that I've done. I mean, right or wrong, I threatened to, to do bodily harm to a person, to Raw Dog, those of you who know who that is. Now, my justifications were because it was a defense system to what was going on to me at the time and the stress I was going through. I didn't, I didn't act it out. I didn't do anything. But I take full responsibility that I let the emotion get to the point where I was so mad at what was being said to me and what was being said about my wife that I wanted to threaten bodily harm. And I was ashamed of myself for that. And as much as I wanted to point other fingers, and there was another person in the news unit who still has problems with me and I don't care, I threatened to want to have a physical fight with him because of the fact that he would not stop trying to hurt me. And I just bottled it up and bottled it up until the point of it. I was so angry I wanted to hurt him. And I was ashamed of myself. And it took my wife saying that she would leave if I wanted to choose to fight him that I decided it's not worth it. And that person's not worth it. And I let go of that anger. And now, when I get the repeated thumbs down from the same individual trolls, and I get the same person, the same trees 13th, and the don't tread on me, whatever, 666, and they say insulting things to me, it doesn't bother me anymore. I just block them now. And they can accuse me of being a liar or whatever. They call me a shill and they call me a communist. That's their opinion. I'm not going to let, I don't wish anything bad on them. You know, I hope they find a better life. We all need to stop wanting to hurt others or allow others to be hurt. And when we allow our governments throughout the world to send troops over to somebody else's free sovereign choice of making a decision and saying, no, you can't do that. And we're going to hurt many people, including regular average citizens that had nothing to do with it. We are just as responsible. So like what's going on in the Ukraine, it's a sovereign nation. They have the right. If they don't agree with their government and they, they feel the only way that they can change it is by overthrowing it, 
they have the right to do that. Just like we did in 17, in the 1776, in the 1700s, when we went through our American Revolution. Just imagine if we were trying to break away from the tyranny of England and all of a sudden China came in and said, no, you can't do that. And they started invading our country. Why do we have the right to say or Russia to have the right to say what some other country has chosen, its own people chose to do? They do it because of the European Union and they're doing that because they want control and they want the power and they want the money and they want the influence over the average person who has to suffer so a few can profit off of it. Am I the only one that can see this? Am I the only one that's tired of it? Am I the only one that sees that people have the right to be able to believe in whatever they want but it's nothing more than hope that you're right? Because that's all a belief is. Because you don't have to believe in oxygen to breathe it. But you also, just because you believe in something, doesn't mean you're right. Because you could be mistaken. You could have been lied to. You could have seen something in a different way than somebody else seen it. Because it's all about perspective. It's time for everybody to grow the hell up. And point the fingers at the people that deserve it. The few at the top are doing everything they can to make you spend your whole life based on emotion so you could be easily led. And it's happened for centuries. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. Well, for the first 42 years of my life, the 30, first 41 years of my life, that's exactly what I did and everybody else has done. Until I woke up, until I started seeing the bigger picture, until I started seeing the consequences for the things that I take responsibility for in my parts, whether... It was initiated or defensed. I still am responsible for what I do, but I can't change the past. I can change the future, and I can change my present. And I will, and I have. It's about time everybody else does it, and we point the fingers in the right way. And I'm not saying going out with pitchforks and fires ablazing, because then we're no better than anybody else. But we can walk away and say no more. I can't do that by myself. And I've used the example of if all of a sudden you had a little ant crawl on you, it may bite you, may sting, may be annoying, but it's not going to kill you. But if all of a sudden 10 million ants decided they wanted to kill me and climbed on top of me, I'm dead. They've spent centuries perfecting the fact that if you scare people into thinking that I'm just one man or I'm just one woman, what can I do? They've separated you. United we stand, divided we fall. If we fall, it is our own fault. I'm ready to stand and unite. What about you? Thanks for watching. Peace.